Thanks for coming out and watching the oxymoronic Reddit professional show, where I showcase the best and worst of the internet. Here I comment on brilliant and hilarious comment chains regarding dumb shit on the internet for you to enjoy. Make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell button so that you get notifications every time we come up with a new video. Enjoy this week's show. Medical professionals of Reddit, what's the most obvious case of faking it you've witnessed? I commonly have young kids who really want glasses because some of their friends have them. They'll come in acting like they can barely see the big E on the chart. I can change some lenses in front of their eyes, give them a little encouragement that they can see better, and they can magically read 2020 with little to no prescription. They're not big fans when I tell them they don't really need glasses. My friend did the opposite. Her school offered eye exams and she'd make sure to be at the back of the line and just recite from memory the letters the other kids had said. She was afraid her parents would be mad if they knew she needed glasses. We have a patient at our primary care clinic who claims to be blind. He always comes in with sunglasses and a white cane. We were always suspicious though, something definitely seemed off. One day, someone followed him out of the building. He walked through our nearly empty parking lot and down the street a little ways to a car parked out of the view of the clinic. He folded up his cane, got in the driver's seat, merged into traffic, and drove away. Called to a bar for a seizure. Waitress says she delivered his bill and he suddenly went to the floor having a seizure. Looked over at him and he's laying there flopping his arms and legs around as he looks us right in the eye and screams over and over, I'm having a seizure. We tell him to stand up so we can take him to the ambulance. He does and starts walking to the door. We tell him to hold up, gotta pay your bill first. Man, was he mad at us. Waitress tells us he does this all the time. Well, not today. He still took a ride to the hospital though. The hospital has good egg salad sandwiches. Not quite the same thing, but in the ER, a woman came claiming she was in labor, so got her on her way to L&D. L&D sent her back saying she was faking it and needed to go to the psych ward. Quick physical exam showed that that was false because the baby was crowning. Sent her back to L&D and from what we heard, baby was delivered in the hall on the way there. My mom had a patient who said she had passed kidney stones at home and needed painkillers. The lady actually brought in the kidney stones as proof. Patients don't usually do this and the stones were way bigger than people can pass on their own. My mom sent them to the lab and they came back as geological origin, aka crazy lady picked up small stones from outside to try and get meds. I can see some first year calling urology like, guys, you're not gonna believe this. This lady has volcanic kidney stones. Veterinarian here for something different. Performed a cruciate repair on a miniature poodle and of course the dog limped post-op. Came in for radiographs a month later to confirm healing. Looked great, but dog was still limping. Two months later, the owner was furious that the surgery was a waste of a thousand dollars. Threatened to sue, but on examination and re-radiographing the leg, I couldn't find a thing wrong. On a hunch, I asked the owner to leave the dog with me for additional tests that would be of no cost to her, so she went shopping for an hour. During that time, I set up a video camera to record the dog in the kennel run. The moment the dog didn't hear the owner or the car anymore, boom. All four legs working like a charm, dog running around perfectly normal. Called the owner and asked her to return after half an hour. Set the camera to record again, and the moment the dog heard the familiar car returning, the limp came back as well. I had a fun few minutes explaining to the owner that her dog was faking the sore leg for attention. Got the usual, oh no, my fur baby schnooky wookums wouldn't do such a thing. So I showed her the footage, clearly showing her dog running around fine, as well as showing what happened when her car returned. Instructed her to ignore the dog while it was limping. Limp magically went away after a week of not getting attention for it. I had a woman come into triage in labor and delivery. We ruled her out for breaking her water. She was mad that she wasn't going to get induced and be delivered. So after I left the room, she flooded the bed, the floor, and herself with tap water. Literally gallons and gallons of water. It was leaking out from under the door. So much water. It was like that scene in Coneheads. She said it was her water breaking. Again, quickly ruled her out and told her she needed to go home. She subsequently peed the bed before leaving. When I wanted to be a physical therapist, I volunteered at one of my local clinics. We had a lady who claimed she was in excruciating pain. She couldn't walk more than five feet without literally screaming in pain in the clinic. She couldn't even move her toes without yelling profanities. She kept talking about how her meds ran out and she needed more. She also started talking about how her whole family thought she was an addict, but she swore she wasn't. I started feeling for her a little. She seemed nice and like she was going through some mess. But then once the doctor walked out of the room, her and I got to talking about music. I told her my uncle was in a bluegrass band and she mentioned how much she loved bluegrass. She loved it so much that the prior weekend her and her husband spent 14 hours at a festival. She was tired, was carrying chairs around and dancing, and they were traveling to go to another one the day after the appointment. 
When I asked her if she had any pain during the festival, she said, Oh, none at all. It was a fantastic weekend. And then realized she gave herself up and got real quiet. My mom had a frequent flyer at the emergency room she worked at. This lady was constantly in unimaginable pain over everything. She got a splinter in her finger, and that constituted a 10 on the pain scale, and she needed painkillers to deal with it. She was a known drug abuser as well. She had been caught stealing needles and shoving them up under her huge sweaty boobs. The only reason my mom found out was because she came back in to place the EKG pads, and to do so, she had to lift her boob to place the pad. When she did, the needles rolled out. From that point on, they had to have a member of security watching her at any time a nurse or doctor left the room. She also had a massive arrest record and there were times the cops would bring her to the ER instead of an ambulance. Not a medical professional, but I work security in an ER. Once had a guy come in, announced that he was going to have a seizure, and then laid down slowly and comfortably on the floor and didn't start seizing until he was sure everybody was looking at him. Then when the nurse, who knew he was obviously faking, said they were going to have to run a tube down his throat, he was suddenly fine. A surprising number of people try to fake being unconscious, but there's a simple test for that. Pick up their hand and drop it onto their face. If they smack their own face, they're unconscious. If they move their hand to the side as it drops, they're conscious. I just brush my finger across the eyelashes. They'll flinch their eyes if conscious. Pediatrician here, so my patient was younger, and I think influenced by mom. This 13-year-old kept getting admitted for complaints that never made sense. Lack of smell, dizziness, seizures that would happen while he was walking or running, heart felt hot, etc. Every specialist under the sun had seen him and cleared him. He had every test and imaging study you could think of. There was a lot of social stuff going on, and this was a hard family to discharge. He'd get admitted, we'd run a hundred tests, and as soon as we were about to discharge him, some new symptom would come up. The worst was once after I had already written the discharge orders and the nurses called to let me know the patient had gone blind. I was grouchy that day and wasn't having it. I went in with a rolled up piece of paper. I checked his pupils, used a Snellen. I went through the whole rigmarole. Then when I was talking to his mother without looking, I threw the paper at him hard and fast. He yelped and dodged it. I told mom that they were going home. So this happened a few months ago on my psychiatry rotation in medical school. There was a patient at an inpatient psychiatry facility for suicidal ideation. She constantly insisted that she had a mass on her breast and demanded to be physically examined only by male doctors. When the psychiatrist I was rotating under declined to perform a physical exam, she asked me to do it during my daily patient interview. I also declined physical exam, but had a bit of a hunch to check her medical records. It turns out she had an ultrasound done a week before that found only normal breast tissue without mass. However, apparently this lady had frequented many doctor's offices with various complaints of an unspecific nature and would usually focus on breasts or vaginal complaints when she visited male physicians' offices. We diagnosed her with factitious disorder, formerly known as Munchausen syndrome, and histrionic personality disorder. It seems her goal was mostly attention from medical professionals. She had lots of issues, but we also had to be careful to make sure she wasn't fishing for a lawsuit. Patients like her are why doctors document everything meticulously. I had a patient who was supposedly comatose, but was giving a few mixed signs when it came to making a definitive judgment. There is a test called the drop arm test, where you raise the patient's arm over their head and drop it. A non-comatose patient will move their arm on their own to avoid hitting themselves in the face. But I had a different idea. With the nurse in the room, I said, okay, our defining test. If his arm stays straight up unassisted, he is comatose. I let go of his arm and it stayed totally upright. The guy did himself in. I told him shortly after that the gig was up and he had no medical reason to be admitted. My grandma used to work with a lady at a hospital, funny enough, that would always say she got an on-the-job injury and needed to take a few weeks workman's comp. A doctor there would somehow always give her a note and she would get a free week or two vacation, come back for a month, and do it again, obviously milking the system. One day her boss said, okay, but there's nothing for you to do here on light duty. Usually we'd send you home until you're better, but we're gonna have you come in until you're better. But there's nothing for me to do, she said. He told her, I know, bring a magazine or something. It'll be a long day sitting in the break room. She lasted two days and never pulled that stunt again. When I was a labor nurse, the emergency room sent up a gal who said she was in labor. She was a sturdier lady, so it was hard to tell. No prenatal care, no fetal heart tones, did an ultrasound, she'd had a hysterectomy. She and her partner insisted we were wrong because they prayed and knew they were having their miracle baby. Good luck with that, ma'am. No miracle baby here, there was no womb at the inn. We had a patient come in on a worker's comp case with severe injuries to the chest. He states that while working in a grocery store parking lot, a female deer spots him from a distance and decides she wants him. 
Once she gets close to him, she kicks him in the chest several times and then headbutts his kneecaps in. Once he's on the ground, she stomps on his chest and head. He wakes up several hours later and immediately comes to us. Not only was his story completely ridiculous, but he didn't have a single mark on his body. No bruising, no swelling, no broken bones. Just nothing. He rated the pain at a 10 out of 10 without a single scratch on his body. Needless to say, he got his claim denied. I'm an x-ray tech, and when I was a student, these two people came in, a man who was pushing a woman on a wheelchair with an ankle boot. They both looked like junkie. Anyway, they came in with a prescription for an ankle x-ray. They ask if she has to take off the boot, and I say yes, because obviously it would superimpose on the anatomy. She all of a sudden starts crying, saying that it was too painful. No tears. The man said she broke her ankle in three places some time ago, and her ankle becomes curved when she takes the boot. It's off. Okay, dude. Ankle x-rays are easy. Take off your shoes and socks, three views, boom, done. But no. Says she she cannot get on the exam table and she needs people to hold her ankle together. We literally had four x-ray techs working this high profile case. One to hold the digital cassette, one to hold her ankle in place, one to hold the chair we had to put on her ankle, and one to push the button to shoot. We did this all while she was screaming in pain and she even said, kill me please! The funny thing? All the x-rays showed no abnormal findings. No old fractures, no screws or plates of any past surgeries. Literally a perfect intact ankle. They wanted painkillers for sure. They looked like drug addicts and had a plan to get more. So annoying. Had a patient arrive to my unit thrashing around on the stretcher and saying, I'm having a seizure, I'm having a seizure. Transport and I moved her into her room and told her to call me when she's done. Amazingly, she was cured. Not a medical professional, but when I was visiting a small town in North Carolina, I had to go to the ER because of a kidney infection. And I remember out of nowhere, they did this thing where they placed a fist on my kidney and lightly punched it with their other hand, and the pain was so searing and awful that I just screamed and cried. They told me it was to make sure I wasn't faking it for the medication. I had someone fake seizures, would be talking normally, stop, shake briefly, stop, and then peek at me to see if I was watching. I believed it initially until I called the MD and they came in while the patient had another seizure. Doctor picked their arm up over their head and instead of the arm falling on their face, it changed course to avoid slamming into their nose. Got called for a seizure to a park well known to be full of homeless drug addicts. We walk up and there is a man laying in the grass in no distress. As soon as I say hi there, he starts shaking his whole body and yells, Oh no, help me, I'm seizing. And his friend says, I think you need to give him some Ativan for the seizures. Had a PT come in with uncontrollable diabetes. He was type 1. His BSL was really high. A couple days and it was back under control and he was ready to be discharged when they went out of control again. Those patterns continued. About 7 a.m. one morning, his girlfriend fronts me needing a note for the judge. He was supposed to be in court at 8 a.m. He'd been eating wild amounts of food to try to get out of going to court, then wanted us to fix the situation with one hour notice. We did nothing. He went home about 11 a.m. Not exactly faking it, but funny story. When I was working in the hospital, a patient's screen with his vital parameters started showing dangerously low levels of oxygen in blood, which basically means somebody is suffocating in a way. So all alarms go on and the nurses and one doctor rush to the patient's room while the CPR mode is active. Surprisingly, the patient was looking all well and didn't show any blue skin, signs of deoxygenated blood. He was even smiling. So everybody just confusedly went on with their business, except for this one sister that grinned at the old man raising her finger saying, Oh, Mr. Smith, did you hold your breath again to see how fast the oxygen level drops? And he just started grinning like a five-year-old and nodded. Had a prisoner once that was faking full amnesia, including name. I told him there was a nerve in his ear that if he put his finger in his ear and couldn't remember his name, that he was for sure faking because it even worked with severe dementia. Finger in ear, remembered name, finger out of ear, can't remember who he was. Insta discharge, back to jail. Oh gosh, I'm a paramedic and can't count the number of patients I've had that fake seizures or fake being unconscious. It is absolutely sickening. A lot of times it's for family sympathy, but sometimes it's just for attention in general. It's insane. The one test I do that always gets the unconscious one is the gurney drop. I sit behind them for a minute long enough to let their guard down. Then I push the lever that drops the head of the gurney back so they go from sitting to laying in a split second. That moment when their upper body falls out from under them will always elicit the oh crap response where they throw their arms up and open their eyes. If you enjoyed this week's effective way to waste time, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. If you're enjoying the series, leave me a comment below. A special shout out to the content creators. You freaking rock.